Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, D.O., and this guy, J.C., John Coleman. John, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How you doing, Dio? I'm doing fantastic. I see that you are wearing the same shirt that you wore yes. last episode. I know, and I see that you're wearing a completely different shirt. Can you explain what the Chocolate Dandies is all about? The Chocolate Dandies. Okay, so shout out to the Chocolate Dandies. If you are on your Google machine, okay, do me a favor. Go to the Google, okay. type in the Chocolate Dandies. They're in Tallahassee, Florida. Okay. If you can't spell Tallahassee, don't worry about it. Google knows how to spell it. It'll autofill. It's the state capital of Florida. Yep. But um, buddy of mine owns like this badass bar up in Tallahassee called Madison Social. Okay. Like it is like the spot. Okay. Especially on game days during football season. But it's just a, a really cool bar. Well, the Chocolate Dandies are three brothers, uh, all uh, minors. So they're all you know, 12, 14, 16 years old. And they started their own brownie company. Wow. And from what I hear, these brownies are phenomenal. Okay. Now, I live in Orlando, Florida. That's a four-hour drive from Tallahassee to um, Orlando. So I have not had a chance to get up there, especially because of the Rona and we're being advised not to travel too much. Mm -hmm. I've had a chance to get up there. Yep. But probably a couple months ago, uh, Madison Social, my buddy Matt's bar, restaurant, was doing a fundraiser for the Chocolate Dandies okay. because their product has taken off. It's kind of like the talk of the town, and they wanted their own food truck. Nice. Now, I don't know who's going to drive the food truck. <laughs> yeah, Ma maybe one of the brothers <laughs> is is actually uh, old enough to. Mm -hmm. Maybe mom and dad are going to drive the food truck. Don't know that. But it was one of those things that, hey, if you come by and you um, purchase a gift card from Madison Social or you buy X amount of brownies, we'll give you a free T-shirt. Okay. So I hit him up on Facebook, and I'm like, hey. I just want a t-shirt. Okay. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> um, like, well, this is a fundraiser. I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll donate. Yeah. So um, anything I can do to support young entrepreneurs, right? Love, 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 love young entrepreneurs. So there they are. So nice. chocolate dandies. And it's an awesome t-shirt. Yeah, it's not swaggy. Yeah. And the way that I go through t-shirts, because um, I tend to wear them to the gym, mm -hmm. then I start, they get functified. Mm -hmm. And they usually have only about a six or nine month shelf life. Mm -hmm. This is at least a T-shirt that if I ever needed to, I'd wear to the gym. Right now, it's too nice. Yeah, it's too nice, man. Way too nice to wear to the gym. But eventually, if it ever gets to that stage, it can become a really awesome gym shirt. There you go. But until then, guys, check them out. I'm sure you can Google them, the Chocolate Dandies. Sure. So that's what this is. There you go. Yeah. Question for you about shirts before we get yeah. going. You tend to wear the same shirt. Do you have, like, your favorite two that you go to for production day? Because uh, I see your outfits. Yeah. And now, y'all that don't get to see JC the way that I do all the time... Like, he's that artsy creative guy, right? Yeah. So you never know what sneakers he's going to be wearing, mm -hmm. what skinny jeans. Do they have <laughs> rips in them? Do they not have rips in them? Is it a T-shirt? If it's a T-shirt, like, how cool and creative is mm -hmm. it? Because this is the one he got when he was traveling to Sweden, and he yeah. picked this one up when he was in Indonesia. <laughs> but, you know, nonetheless, do you have a specific outfit that you try to keep to when you know that that we're shooting an episode, I sometimes I do. To be honest with you, it's I recycle them clearly because I only have I have hundreds of shirts, mind you. I only rotate five to six. Don't ask me why. Um, whatever's the least wrinkled, and I I sometimes do like I won't wear like the ugly plaid like Christmas green shirt on stream. I use this one or another one. Yeah, but you you almost freaked out when I when you came to work here because you work with a bunch of bankers and correct people are wearing ties, yes. and starched white shirts, yes. and you're like, I'm used to like a baseball cap and a t-shirt. Yeah, if yeah. that, yeah, if that, <laughs> yeah, if that. But, you know, it's good, it's good. It's time to mature. You know what I'm saying? But I still have like you would be surprised. I have like you know a lot of pairs of shirts and a lot of pair of pants, pair of shirts. I have a lot of shirts and pants to wear, but I only rotate three to four. All right. Yeah. Very good. You mentioned maturing. Yes. Yeah. You know what's maturing right now? What's that? People's mortgages. Okay. Yeah, like they've had them for too long. Yes. Because do you know what has happened to mortgage rates over the past nine months? I have heard from the grapevine that they have been going down, sir. Yeah, like they plummeted. Like like free fall, bungee jumped, skydived, like Yeah. Like I can't down not turn the I can't not watch a commercial and see something pop up reminding me about low interest rates. Okay, so there you go. Rates are low. But this is going to be because of this low rate, we're going to talk about refinances. Let's do it. We're just going to do it, and we're not going to do it boringly, and we're going to do it quickly. Okay. Okay? Because who should refinance? Everyone. Right now. Refi. Right now. Everyone. Not everyone. Oh, okay. Not everyone. Oh. But 
everyone should entertain refinancing. Mm. It's a five minute to 25 minute conversation with your favorite loan officer. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your favorite loan officer, ask your neighbor, ask your coworker, ask your sibling. Or they could ask you, because you know what? I think you know about 50 pretty damn good loan officers. I know 50 fantastic loan officers. Yes, you could hit me up if you wanted to. DustinOwen.com, D-Owen at WaterstoneMortgage.com, the Loan Officer Podcast on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm everywhere. Yes, you can hit me up. Yeah. Uh, shameless plug there. Yeah. Um, but no, so refinancing is not for everybody. <laughs> Here is when a refinance would make sense. Here are some things that you should be considering. Okay. This is a business transaction. Too many times, and we talk about this on various episodes, especially episodes where we bring on financial advisors. We bring on people like Credit Christie. We talk about our favorite B word, which is not beer and bratwurst, but budgeting. Yes. Although we do love beer and I love brats. Do you love brats? Uh, no, there we go. We don't all love brats, but we do love budgeting and we do love beer. Um, but we, we've, we've chatted about running our household the way you would a business and not yep. all of us have experience in business. So this show is to open your eyes and to have conversations that are more business oriented. Yep. Don't let the name fool you. It is the loan officer podcast, but this show is for everybody. Yep. Okay. So when you're looking at whether or not you should refinance, you should take it from a ROI return on investment standpoint, depending on the state that you're in you're going to have closing costs, mm. right? That is money that you have to spend to refinance. Now, there are people who advertise. No way, closing. It's advertising. It's marketing. <laughs> it's to an elicit an emotional response to get you to pick up the phone and call. Yeah. They'll say no closing costs, which there are no closing cost options, and that may be the better option for you. But please know when you're doing a no closing cost option, your interest rate is higher than it would have been if you didn't pay closing costs. Mm, makes sense. Okay. There's never a wrong or right. There's always a personal preference. You just need to make sure the person on the other end of the phone that you're asking questions to is walking you through those options. For example, let's say today's interest rate was 3%. At a 3% interest rate, if your closing costs were $4,000, you would want to factor in, well, I'm paying $4,000. Like That's money you don't get back, by the way. That's like- Gone. Yep, gone. It's whether it's uh, money to an appraiser, money to the mortgage company to underwrite and process your file, money for your credit report, money to the title company or closing attorney to close your new transaction, money to the state if your state taxes you. Some states do, some states don't. Tax you on your mortgage. The county you live in may tax you on your mortgage. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's $4,000. Right up front, you're going to run an ROI, a return on investment analysis to say, well, if I spend $4,000, and by the way, it's not money out of your pocket 99 times out of 100. Normally, that four grand is rolled into your new loan amount. Okay. So let's say your payoff was $250,000. Well, actually, your new loan is going to be $254,000. Okay. Because we understand that four grand on a 30 year fixed mortgage, yeah, that's like 28 bucks a month. Not hmm, big deal. Yeah, don't go into your savings account and pull four grand out when you can just roll it into your mortgage. Unless you want to. Again, personal preference, folks. These are the types of thoughts you should be having, though. Yep. So then you look at, well, I'm paying four grand. What am I saving? Well, if I'm dropping from a 4% rate down to a 3% rate, then I'm saving 200 bucks a month. Well, I'm going to run a quick ROI analysis. Do I want to save 200 bucks a month, even though it's going to cost me 400? Oh, I'm sorry, it cost me 4000 yeah. Well, how many times does 200 go into 4000 It goes in there 20 times. So I'm going to ask you, what would your cost to break even be on that refinance? Like over a little bit over? Two Just years. 20 months. So, yeah. so at month 21, it made sense. So that's when you and Honey or Boo or Deer or whoever you go, you, you live with and you share a mortgage with, and it may be yourself, so high five to you. You need to ask the question, what's the likelihood of us living in this home, not refinancing it, and not paying it off for at least 21 months? Hmm. If the answer is, Ooh, you know what, I think we'll be here for 12 months, but I don't know about, about 20, a refinance doesn't make sense even though you're going to save 200 bucks. Question. So yes. you just said uh, if we're not going to refi again, if you refi, is there a certain time frame that you're locked out where you can't refi again? Or like no. you could refi every you, year if you, you wanted to. You could refinance every six months if you wanted to. Really? You could refinance right now. And if rates drop from 3% to 2% next month, you refinance again. But if you do that, you're just out another closing cost. You're for out it. a whole another closing cost going through the process. And 
the bank or lender that you used the first time is pissed because they just lost a bunch of money on your transaction. Gotcha. Yeah. Believe it or not, guys, banks and lenders want you to not only pay your loans on time, but just pay what you owe. Like, don't pay extra. No, this is what they want, not what we want you to do as your advisor, but they, and they don't want you to pay them off too quickly. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be paid on time and they want to be paid off, but preferably not too quickly mm -hmm. because that bank or lender, there's a cost to produce that loan. Mm -hmm. There's overhead. So they front a bunch of money to, to produce your loan. They want you to make a certain set of payments so they can get that money back plus their profit. Mm -hmm. So if you pay them off too quickly, mm -hmm. then they didn't get to, to realize a profit. Mm -hmm. Um, but you as a consumer, don't worry about that. That's not for this show. That is a FYI. Glad you know it. If your brain's too full, go ahead and open it up. Let that seep out so you can put some of this, some more information in that we're going to be spitting here. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so in that situation of ROI, it was you're saving 200 bucks a month. You paid $4,000 in closing costs. Your cost to break even was 20 months. If you're going to be in, it's a likelihood of you being in this mortgage for more than 21 months. Mm -hmm then you refinance. Yeah. Same thing goes for closing costs. Cause there's, it's just like a, um, like a tiered layered, um, thought process because what if you could obtain a new loan at three and a half percent with no closing costs? Hmm. Well, here's what I know at three and a half percent and no closing costs, then my payment will be a hundred bucks more a month than it would have been at, at 3% and $4,000 in closing costs. So let me walk you back through that. Okay. You could have an interest rate of 3%, but that, but a rate of three comes with $4,000 in closing costs. Mm -hmm. If a lender or a bank or some commercial on TV is telling you that they offer no closing costs, more than likely that's because they have it built but, into yeah. your rate. Correct. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, personal preference, but you would have to figure out, well, what makes more sense for me? It's another ROI calculation. So the difference between 3% and 3.5% may be 100 bucks a month. Is it worth me to do a loan where, or a refinance where my, my, my payment is 100 bucks higher at a 3.5% rate versus a 3% rate, but I didn't have to pay any closing costs? Well, same question. How long do you see yourself living in this home for? If you're not confident that you're going to be in the, the, the home for 20 or 24 months, you may go ahead, hedge your bets, do the no closing cost option. Even though you're not going to save as much, you're still saving. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about not recouping your, your closing costs. Mm -hmm. But if you're at a point in life where this is like the house, it's the neighborhood, the school system, your kids are probably four, six, and eight. And you know you're going to live in this home until the, the, the four-year-old graduates high school, which is 13 years from now. Mm -hmm. You would probably want to pay the four grand in closing costs. Mm -hmm. And you would probably want to take the lower interest rate because over time, mm -hmm. it would have made all the sense in the world to pay that four grand, especially when more than likely that four grand wasn't even out of pocket. It was just added to your new loan. Mm -hmm. But these are the types of thoughts people should be having before they go and do a refinance mm -hmm. because a refi doesn't make sense for everybody. Now, why would someone refinance? Well, the easy one is, well, to lower my rate and lower my payment. Yeah. But what if your rate doesn't get lower? What if your rate stays the same, but when you first bought your home three years ago, you had mortgage insurance and by refinancing, you could have your mortgage insurance removed. You had mortgage insurance because you probably didn't put down 20%. You have mortgage insurance, um, because that's a fee to protect your bank and lender against you going into default. Mm -hmm. But now that you've paid down your loan and now that your home is appreciated, you don't have to have mortgage insurance if you just got a new loan. Mm. You may very well want to do it because, again, what if dropping mortgage insurance saved you $185 a month? Yeah. You would run the same exact ROI calculation to make sure that it makes sense to go through this process, pay those closing costs just to save $185 a month. Yeah. There's sometimes your rate's going to go up. Just because it goes up, does that mean you should not refi? No, not one bit. What if for whatever reason life happened? And by life happening, it could be you're irresponsible. Mm -hmm. By life happening, it could be you didn't foresee your spouse losing their job. You didn't make any adjustments to your lifestyle quick enough, or it was too difficult to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Maybe little junior needs some kind of a medical procedure that you just don't have the funds for, and insurance doesn't cover it because they call it quote unquote elective. Mm -hmm. 
What if your house is breaking the F down and you just got to fix it up? There's going to be times where you're sitting on a pile of cash. Many, many, many folks are sitting on a pile of cash, but that cash is called their equity. Hmm. And that may be their whole life savings. That, that, that may be what they have. It may make sense for them. Let's say for whatever reason, they have a really good rate. Let's say, I don't know how they did this, but they locked in at three and a quarter. And let's say because life happened, their credit got a little bit dinged up. And because their credit got dinged up, their credit score is a 660 and not a 760. And at a 660 credit score, I promise you, you're not getting the 3% rate. You're getting a 4% rate in today's market. Mm. Well, this person who is sitting on a pile of equity, by a pile of equity, I mean the home is worth 400 and they owe 180. Mm. So they have $220,000 of equity in their property. What if we could show them financially how to do a refinance Hey, the bad news, John, to you and your family, mm-hmm. is that your interest, rate, your interest rate is currently at three and a half. And because your credit score has dropped because you've maxed out your credit cards and you have a medical collection and you missed this payment, I can give you a new loan. It's going to be 4%. But I'm going to go ahead and let you pull out $120,000 of equity. And you're going to take that $120,000 of equity and you're going to pay off that $40,000 of credit card debt you're going to go ahead and pay off that $12,000 medical collection from when Junior had that that procedure that he had to have done, but insurance wouldn't cover it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the money you need to get the new AC and the new roof because your roof's leaking and your AC's broken. Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, yes, you now owe an extra 120 grand on your mortgage. And yes, your interest rate went from three and a half to four. But... So your mortgage payment is now roughly $700 more per month, but the credit card debt alone, when you made just minimum payments, yeah, just... was 1300 So I've already bettered your overall <laughs> yeah. financial position by five to $600 a month, and that medical collection is off. Yeah. And you have a new roof and new AC, which by the way, new roof, new AC, your power bill is going to go down. Mm. Right? Your... your Roof's not going to leak, which means it's not going to ruin any of your personal mm-hmm. belongings. Mm-hmm. You getting that medical collection paid off and those credit cards paid off, your credit score is going to rebound, which now makes financing and purchasing, whether it's cars, whether it's student loans, mm-hmm. or those credit cards. And maybe we even left you with a little bit of extra cash so that the next time life throws you a curveball, you finally have that emergency fund. You have three to six months of a lifestyle in reserve. Because hmm. maybe we gave you 120 grand. But we knew you only needed 90. Hmm. So of the 30 that was left, no, it was not sent, it was spent on that new center console or that new fifth wheel or that Alaskan cruise you've always wanted to take. No, that money was put aside for the next time life throws you a curveball so you don't go running back to your credit cards hmm. or you don't let that doctor's bill just go into collection. Hmm. So there are times when, when, when that makes sense. That's why consulting with a professional makes all the sense in the world. Hmm. Um, you know, other things that people should consider when, when refinancing, do I pay points or do I not pay points? Right? There is a company out there. They're the largest mortgage provider in America. They're not owned by a bank. They recently had an IPO. And their commercials anymore don't even sound like they're a mortgage company. Okay. I think they're called like, I don't know, the missile or something. the launcher, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. But if you go on their website, they love to elicit the emotional response of the consumer. Mm-hmm. And they love to show super cheap interest rates, like 2.375 on a 30-year fixed mortgage. Oh, my goodness. That's super low. It is super low. And if you read the fine print, you're paying 2.125 discount points. And someone's going to say, what's a discount point? There he goes, using industry (laughs) jargon again. Okay, upfront money in order to get a lower interest rate. Period, end of story. Your closing costs are now going to be on your $250,000 loan. They're going to be roughly about five or six grand higher. So you know how I was saying it's four grand? Yeah. Now it's 10 grand. Wait, I couldn't... Or nine grand. I couldn't even afford the five grand. Now it's 12 grand. How am I ever supposed to... Well, you have to run an ROI on that. You just have to run out to some people. They're like, yo, I'm going to be in this home for 18 years. 
And if you're telling me by paying nine grand in closing costs versus four grand in closing costs, my interest rate is going to be 2.375, not three. My payment's going to be that much cheaper. Mm. Then I'm going to, over time, I'm going to make all that money back up and then some. Mm. Personal preference. Yeah. Not everyone has that much money to roll into their new loan. Maybe they're, not in, the, they're in a tight equity position versus a, a loose or or heavily equity position. Mm -hmm. um, but it's things that you just have to know that there's not a one size fits all. These are questions you should be asking. You should be like, well, what are my options? Mm -hmm. Then you should sit down with your spouse or your significant other or your, the mirror if you live by yourself mm -hmm. and really figure out what do I think makes most sense for me based on where I am with life and with this home. Don't overanalyze it. We don't need to have the whole paralysis by analysis, mm -hmm. but at least think about it. Go with your gut and move on, but these are thought processes you should be having. Hmm. Oh, should I do a 15-year fixed mortgage or a 30-year fixed mortgage? Well, I don't know where you in life. Are you already maxing out your 401k, maxing out your IRA? Do you have a six-month reserve? Can you afford the payment every single month on a 15-year versus a 30-year? Because payments are higher on a 15-year mm -hmm. versus a 30-year. The answer is yes, roll with it. Yeah. If that's what makes you sleep good at night, roll with it. But if you're worried about the payment, do a 30-year. You can always make extra payments on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So you can pay a 30-year fixed mortgage off in less than 30 years by applying extra payments. Mm. But I would tell you not to apply extra payments until you've at least maxed out your 401k, contributed to an IRA, and you have six months reserve. Mm -hmm. Now, if you work in a profession, i.e. medical doctor, where you could potentially be sued for malpractice, and that suit could potentially impact your private assets... Maybe for you, you're a carvet, you're a caveat, you're, you're, you're an exception to the rule. And maybe for you, you need to get that house paid off quickly. Cause maybe you live in a state that protects your homestead mm -hmm. or primary residence against suit. Mm -hmm. So then at that case, you buy the biggest damn house you can qualify for mm -hmm. and you get that MF or paid off quickly mm -hmm. because worst case, if, and when worst case ever happened, you at least know you have this home mm -hmm. that you own free and clear that no one can touch. Gotcha. Most of us don't have that. Mm -hmm. So most of us, we're probably going to look at a 30-year fixed instrument, but you can look at 20-year, 25-year, 15-year, and it's the thought process you take into that. Like, like these are the thoughts we want people having. Mm -hmm. Should I refinance? I don't know, but you should look into it. Mm -hmm. Should I do a 15-year versus a 30-year? I don't know, but let's have a conversation about where you are in life, where you are in finance, where you're going to be, where you think you're going to be, and let's discuss your options. Should I pay points? I don't know. Like you're, I don't know, but we should explore. Yeah, we should look into this, um, and 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 make it happen. And don't be afraid to double refi. I've had clients who came to us, and for the right reasons, an FHA loan was the best loan. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had bruised credit. Maybe their credit was bruised because they had missed payments and they had maxed out credit cards. Maybe mm -hmm. we could show them how, with a cash out refinance, we could pay off all their credit cards at which point their credit score would improve. Mm. And because of their equity position, we could refi them a year later and remove the mortgage insurance. It was a double refi. It was a tactical, strategic. Hmm. Um, it, it would be like if I had this old vintage car that I totally wanted to redo, I may not be able to redo the body and the interior and the engine all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I do it in three <laughs> yeah, different parts, yeah. right? As as it it allows it, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I start with the engine because that at least lets me get these things to the car show. Maybe I to get into the car show, I meet a really good body guy. Mm -hmm. And then that really good body guy, once I pay him or her to do the body work, I then mm -hmm. am introduced to someone to do upholstery, mm -hmm. right? Three. Gotcha. So you can do a refinance in that same manner. Maybe you do the refinance that, that you qualify for today in order to get you to the refinance that's going to help you mm -hmm. for the long haul. Mm -hmm. But... When someone is considering refinance, that these are the things that you consider. If you're going to pay your house off by either paying it off or sell it, you within the next two years, you shouldn't. Hmm. And if your cost to break even is greater than five years, you probably shouldn't. Cost to break even. Cost to break, break even. even. That's that ROI yeah. I was mm -hmm. talking about. When you run your ROI calculation, if and when your cost to break even, just because five years is a long period of time. Okay. And as much as I think that I'm going to live in my home. I mean, my daughter's in seventh grade, so I'm going to verbalize to you and everyone else, we have 
Seventh, eighth, plus all of high school. I have six more years in this house. I can't guarantee that. Mm -hmm. What if I get a phenomenal opportunity to move to D.C.? I mean, by the way, folks in D.C., I love your town. If you can find a reason for you to come visit or you want to hire me. Um, no, <laughs> I, I, I say that in jest. Don't hire me because I love what I do right now. Um, but you can definitely bring John and I in. We'd love to speak to you <laughs> about podcasting, about personal budget, about being a loan officer. But um, I do have this dream, totally rabbit hole here. I think at some point when my daughter graduates high school and she's off into college, if I could get an awesome gig working in like policy yeah. or lobbying for my industry, I think that would be fun. I would love to see that. D.C. is a beautiful town. I know. Um, and I have family in Annapolis. That's only like an hour away. I can go to Nationals games. Sounds like you've thought this out. A little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit. So I'm putting it out there. You have taught me, John, the John Coleman. Yes. If you put it in the industry. Or not, the, no, in it, it? Put it in the universe. In the universe. Yeah. If you make it real. If you say if it stays in your head or you don't say it, it's one thing. But as soon as you articulate it or and or you write it down, it becomes physical reality. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, yep. children 18 plus, yep. people tuning into this podcast right now, write it down, say it out loud. I need to. I need to. Check into. Check into. Whether or not. Whether or not. A refinance makes sense. A refinance makes sense. It's a five minute to 25 minute phone call with your favorite loan officer. If you don't have a favorite loan officer, call John Coleman. You can find him on YouTube. John Coleman. He works for Waterstone Mortgage, previously EA Sports. He's also found on this podcast every Monday and every Thursday. Yes. And yes. you can hit me up, and then don't worry, I'll forward all your information and your questions right over to D.O., and he'll get you in contact with a highly qualified, very specialized loan originator. Teamwork makes the dream work, but we're serious. Look, if you are a homeowner and you purchased your home within the past, whether it's one year ago, whether it's 10 years ago, if you haven't refinanced yet, you need to. Yes. Um, these rates will be sticking around, but not for long. That's a whole nother episode. I will promise you this. Mortgage rates will be higher by Q3 of next year. By the way, we're entering Q4 of 2020 in about a week. Damn. Okay, in one week. So that means we only have like six to nine months of, of these rates, and they're going to progressively go up. I won't bore you with the whys. You can call me. We can chat about those, 407-645-6363. But just take my word. Rates are not going to stay this low. You want to do it now. At least have the conversation now. Say it, write it down, put it out into the universe. And thank you for tuning in. Share us, like us. We need more people like you to listen. So let people know that we're here. We have fun doing this, but we have more fun doing this when more people tune in. Yes, sir. He's JC. I'm Dio. This is all we have for today. We're out. Peace.